I suppose when I was asked to speak at this and looking at the title of Defending Free State Education, I am um, sort of hark back really quickly to an event which has been sort of touched upon from what Maya said about the campaign at Sussex, which I'll try and come back to in a second. Um, but on March 25th, so we're talking April, two months ago now, um, was probably the largest student action we've seen in the UK since 2010, and it was at Sussex University. Um, the evening before, there were amazing numbers of people arriving to the occupation to join the campaign that was kind of settled into the space. And then on the day of the, the 25th of March, when we'd called our national demonstration, there were coach loads of students coming down from across the country to join us on campus to, to really fight against privatisation, not just at Sussex, but the wider implications of what we're seeing. Um, I mean, we're talking to over 2,000 students joining the Sussex students already there and really making a stand about something. Uh, and after the, the demonstration took place, there was a, a general meeting of over 650 students who'd stayed for the meeting into the evening with you know, 27 universities and further education colleges represented. And it was a real, uh, hopefully, turning point for the way in which students can organise and students can look forward to, to reclaiming our universities and reclaiming our education. Um, and I suppose that was sort of the moment I think back to in terms of how we defend free state education is to really, as has been said time and time again, look to ourselves as students, as teachers and and academics and really look at what's happening and how we can, you know, change it. Um, I suppose as a student, as Maya said, it's, um, it's very easy to feel like you are a consumer, that the education you're receiving at university is a commodity. You know, I, thankfully I managed to get into uni just slightly before the £9,000 fees, but I'm still paying a, a fair proportion, you know, £3,000 a year to study at undergraduate level and no doubt once I finish this, if I want to go and study more, I'll be spending even more and more and more until the, you know, the debts outweigh anything else. Um, and when you think about that in context of a £9,000 a year fee, plus the extortionate rent that the universities charge for their students, and then once you finish living on campus, the, the fees from private landlords, we're talking about 40, over £40,000 worth of debt for an undergraduate degree that when you see you go out into the real world, isn't going to find you a job beyond unpaid internships and, and work there. Um, so I think in terms of the consumer model that students feel they're part of, it's not that students, from my opinion and from how I've perceived it, are to be blamed for feeling this, but it's encouraging as united between students and staff, between faculty and teachers, both in schools and in universities, to really critically engage with why this is the case, why we do feel like we're these consumers. Um, and I suppose it, it looks back to 2010. Um, in the way I perceive it, in that the student body are, are painted and told to be these consumers. And I think when we look back at 2010, which is the kind of the big student action around the university fees and the, and the, the legislation that went through to really high cut, you know, your higher education costs, students came out in force. Um, and what sort of happened in the media as soon as that was over was students were painted to be the self-interested, violent thugs who sort of went onto the streets so they didn't want to pay more for their education and they weren't happy about it, they wanted to be selfish and you know, we, we didn't understand the, the economics behind it. And also once that paper had gone through and once the legislation had passed, we were left sort of not really knowing what was next. It's, when you have a focal point for what's happening in the national context, it's very easy to come out and, and demonstrate and campaign and protest, but once that's gone through and then a feat goes ahead, um, you're sort of left feeling, well, what do we do and how do we combat this? Um, but I think what's so key is when reflecting back and then looking at Sussex, it's because of the state of affairs that we're in. Students aren't alone in facing these problems and also aren't coming out and demonstrating about single issue, you know, our fees are going up for ourselves. The one thing the media entirely ignored in 2010 was that most of the students on these demonstrations were already in university. They were already taking their degrees. They weren't going to be facing themselves these hike in education costs. This was looking into the future because we saw the, you know, the state of affairs that we were likely to be part of once we graduated. Moreover, I think, in terms of student organisation, um, in the past where the student has paid for their degree, for the first, you know, the small time we have been paying for university degrees at undergraduate level, there was an expectation with a degree you'd go out into the real world, get yourself a job, and you sort of then wouldn't think about it too much. But as we're seeing, there's more and more graduates now who haven't been leaving university to have this social contract or even this market contract fulfilled and going off into their jobs. They're, they're sitting at home in debt without being able to find employment. Um, so I think what we're seeing, and I guess what I'm going to try and get to now after my long introduction, is, is really why we should be defending for education, why we need to be fighting the consumer model, especially in universities. And I think Maya touched upon what I'd really, and I can rant for a long time, like to really think about as a student today, is that us feeling like consumers is something we need to really be fighting, not solely to ensure that free education is kept on the agenda, 
but also to ensure that education remains a space where we do critically engage with society, with the future of the United Kingdom, of the world, of the system, whatever we describe it as, but really don't just go in looking for, for some sort of contract to be fulfilled, that we're fed information, we can spew out onto an exam, get our 2-1, and then go off into, into the workforce, into the labour market that we're expected to join. Um, and I think that's the, the key issue that's facing us at the moment as students, but also as education establishment, or as people who have a vested interest in the concept of education. When I went to university, I was slightly just kind of, I started, I should say, I'm still, still studying. When I arrived at university for the first time and went to my first lecture, I was taken aback by the expectations that student have, the students have of what they were to be fed, what they were to be given, the numbers of emails being sent to lecturers, the number of times people would come to the seminars or tutorials, completely unprepared, expecting to be spoon-fed knowledge. Um, and at the same time, when I was sitting in lectures and listening to the way in which, at least in a law degree, but I think a majority of people from, from my experiences of going to other lectures, going to other universities, speaking and listening, that a lot of people have is that this is just a, a stepping stone into the labour market. This is the way in which we view education now is it's a necessity. You know, the standard phrase, you can't get a job without a degree. And subsequently, the university is able to, to become a place where you, you pay for, for, your, for your product and you take it away with you and you use that and you write it on your CV. I guess the problem with that in of itself is that education is not a commodity. And especially at higher education level where you're studying degrees and studying supposedly in detail, rather than having the opportunity to, to seriously consider what you're being taught and critically engaging with it, we're expected to take in information and, and, and have that in our mindsets for exams and as soon as that's over we leave. And supposedly that's worthwhile. Whereas the idea of fees playing into this, and the reason I think especially now it's so important to halt this, is ultimately the government want this. This is what, this is what the state wants us to be doing, to be spoon-fed information, make us employable, make us look like we're educated, and then go off and continue the, the capital relation that exists. But, but what's really important, I would suggest, is now that we are facing £9,000 fees, and now that you're looking at what the government are doing both through the white paper, and also looking in terms of what they're doing outside of Parliament, which is selling off our student debts to private companies, introducing, like at Sussex, private industry into the university. Now, yes, the, the claim is being made by the management that these support services, they're not key, they're not part of your academic life, why does it matter to you? The reality is this is a commodification of a university. It's changing the state of affairs from, as been, has been said, a democratic and accountable institution to an institution that's surrounded by, by private profit, by, by private companies. And once we see that happening, once we do have the, the emergence of, of business within the university, which is already happening, it's not a huge step to see, I mean, at Sussex, for instance, catering and security, portering. The next step will be the library that's already on the cards. And once your library is privatised, what's wrong with privatising departments and privatising lectures? And I suppose I'm not going to talk about it, so I hope it, I've tried to set the groundwork. But when you've got your lectures and your seminars which are privatised, when you've got private industry and private companies controlling what you're studying and, and encouraging you to work in a certain way, I, I don't think it's difficult to make those links between not allowing you to critically engage with what you're supposedly being taught. And I get, briefly, I know that with academies it's there, but the one thing I think is worth researching if you haven't looked yet is studio schools. I'm not gonna, haven't got time right now to talk about them too much, but I, I wrote a little bit about them in something I've written recently. And, you know, the studio school, is, I think it's 12 now they've got so far, a private company is taking students from the age of 14 and upwards, and they, they go to these special schools where they get to work in real jobs, unpaid under the age of 16, then on below minimum wage after that. But it's private companies taking over the education system already through the back door, not going through parliament. Um, I suppose, in short, what I was trying to get to, and hopefully we can engage in some sort of dialogue, is that as a student, I feel it's so key not to be allowing myself to feel like I'm a consumer, not to allow ourselves to become in a position where the education, especially at university, but education throughout, is just part of the, the kind of the system of global capital that exists everywhere, but to ring fence and defend the idea of the university. And I suppose, as Myra said, one of the key ways we do this is through organising, through creating links between students and staff, facing the same problems because ultimately whether it's us as students who are having to pay to be there then getting out into the real world and not having a job, or going into the workforce or for instance the university where we have no security and no pensions, it's all the same problems that we're facing. But, but I suppose the other thing that we need to be doing, in my opinion at least, is to reopen the sp a space in the university for dialogue, for critically discussing what's happening. Um, part of that is to stop managerialism in the university um, including, for instance, the new chair of the University of Sussex Council was a UBS banker. And if you look at the Vice-Chancellor, he's not taught anything for a very long time. He's not an academic anymore, he's a, he's a manager. Um, and, and I suppose 
through occupation and through other ideas and other means is to reclaim the space of what a university used to be, which is what, what we managed to do. It was having lectures that were free to attend and open to discussion. Having a space that belongs to the students, belongs to the staff and belongs to the faculty whose institution it is and removing the power away from, from, from managerialism and from private enterprise into the hands of the student. Um, I'm, I realise I haven't really said very much, but uh, hopefully that's given a brief overview of what I'm sort of interested in. And yeah, feel free to ask questions. an interesting and passionate speech.